chaos largely for people are coming to chaos largely for the investment in software. They, they want to see the metrics live. And so I think these hosted solutions are going to be important, but I, th I think also from talking to Daniel, helping organizations understand the metrics and build their strategy is a services component that Paturgia offers that, um, you know, regardless of the software is going to be part, is a big part of the value add for OSPOs. It, and, you know, we kind of understand yep. the, the reasons people, OSPOs choose different technologies. And I think it's largely pivoting on a question of scale. Um, so we're, we're working on a, sort of a joint chaos software venture to um, advance chaos. Matt, you are muted. Well, yeah, good point, Elizabeth. Tony, have you been on this call? Before? I have. Yep. Okay. I thought so. Okay. I, I missed a couple of weeks because I had some conflicts with work, but yeah, okay. I've been here before. Do you know what we're doing? <laughs> have you caught wind of this? So with this group? So the first I had heard of any transition was yesterday in the Ospology oh, uh, okay. call. Um, but um, I kind of got the, from Anna's explanation there, I kind of understand what's going on. Okay, so we're just, and then Dan, welcome. I don't know if you've been on this call before. And if not, that's cool. And, um, but then maybe to Elizabeth's point for Tony and, and Dan, really what it is, is the value working group. So we have a variety of different working groups in the chaos project. For example, the DEI working group or a risk working group. Um, and this was the value working group has kind of shifted several times over the last couple of years. Um, in a way that has been <laughs> kind of like a, a boat drifting out at sea sometimes. And so um, at least at least three or four major changes in direction over yeah. the years. Yep. Yep. And so really the the shift is to kind of um, you know kind of cement things down in this group and particularly um, as you saw yesterday, Tony. Um, with that particular shift towards OSPOs and helping OSPOs. And this could be, and we'll have to sort this out as we go forward, but this could be things like for-profit OSPOs. This could be government OSPOs. This could be university OSPOs. We'll kind of have to sort that out, I think, as we go forward, because yeah. there are a bunch of different OSPOs that have different interests. Yeah, and just for your benefit, Matt, um, yeah. I, I am a startup, a Silicon startup called Rapid Silicon, yeah. and I am the director of our OSPO inside of this company. And as okay. a startup, we, we base everything we do, including our tape out on open source infrastructure. Um, so we realized very early that we needed to have an Osbo to figure out and manage things. That was one of the key things that brought me over to the company from where I was before. Yep. And in some of my previous conversations here, the value working group is of particular importance to me um, because we are taking a lot of open source content in the EDA world and turning it into a commercial product. And we want to understand the value of where can where is the most tactically beneficial place for us to contribute back into the community. Perfect. Documentation or code or something else, right? So yeah, this all aligns with my understanding of okay. our group. Right on. And I mean that that case that you present is probably a case that's pretty common <laughs> across a variety of different OSPOs, like where to where to focus resources, where to <laughs> where to put your effort. So, all right, cool. All right. Yep. So, let me share the screen then, maybe. Uh, okay. Are you all able to see my screens? Yep. And look, I've already changed a few of the assets. Yes, and I've changed the title over there, so. So first thing is on the name change, we have a PR, uh, like I, Anna created an issue and a PR too. Yep. So, yep. so I, I went through the PR, but my only concern in that PR was to let's realign the focus areas that, that we want so that we can like merge it or maybe we can merge it and then revise it onwards is the two options. Yeah, I mean that. So, what was the concern? So, my first concern was like uh, that this was a small minor. I will be like yeah. chaos OSPO metric working group. Uh, my second concern was the 
uh, like main object. These are the small bigger concern is on this one, this one. So we need to have a like clear picture on the focus areas because we we need a, a detailed focus area because in the readme we have a focus area that we focus sure. on. Right now we have like individual value, organization value. Does it align with the new direction that we are taking? Probably like we not. have a cat, yeah, yeah. So that, so that was my biggest concern in merging this request because this has existing focus areas that needs to be reworked before we move ahead. With yeah, I mean the other. Um, I, go ahead, Sean. I mean, I don't think that purpose is. In, co in in commensurate with what's written here in the pull request. I, I think this is an elaboration of yep. of how OSPOs derive value from chaos metrics. And that is in fact maybe what the value group is about anyway. Yep. Um, no purpose is fine. Like let me open the detail uh, file change so that I can show my comments. Okay. So I'm fine with the scope uh, and I have jotted out. I'm fine with the community. I was unable to comment on this area. Like these are the areas that needs to be uh, worked on over here. Let me expand that. So how to join? It's like uh, you're welcome to join. Uh, explaining. Uh, find more as you contributor uh, let me give a place where this was not yep this area all the contributors are welcome to join in the value working the areas interest include social value which we previously decided to move it that was still there in the same uh, revision so and we have like uh, individual uh, organizational value individual value communal value that needs to be realigned so that uh, okay. We are, we are asking people to come to join, and we we should give them a clear direction that what our goal is, uh, like how they align their interest with them. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think we could maybe sort that out here today, which would be good. From so, I think yes. we could probably merge this and then okay. issue another PR against that. Okay, against the new code. Um, okay. The other the other thing to think about is. Um, for for those of you that also kind of don't know, just from a working perspective, I'll share something here. Okay, let me stop share it. Okay. So, so I'm um, going I'm going to merge this PR night right now. Sure. Okay. So um, I just put it in the chat, but Tony, I don't know if you've seen this before. The spreadsheet. Yes, I have. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the really kind of what Vinod is talking about is like your row 20, row 27. You know what I mean? We kind of have these these holders. Um, as we move to the new website design, um, the concept of focus areas is going to kind of go away. So just because it's going to be a little bit easier to serve the metrics uh, based on search. And so fundamentally, we're going to be using context tags and keyword tags so that people could say, like, I'm interested in, for example, they could type organizational value or they could type, you know what I mean? And it'll bring up the metrics that are kind of tagged in that way. And they may be across different working groups as well. So the focus areas for us anymore, they used to be kind of important because they would show up in our PDF and in our release. There were ways for us to organize things to show to people. Um, but as we had like 75 metrics, the, the organizational structure just kind of started falling apart and we realized that moving to a search model would be considerably more sensible. Um, so that's what we're doing this summer, uh, this fall. So the focus areas for us anymore are really just meant to help the working group work. So we could, in theory, get rid of all focus area names. You know what I mean? We could just <laughs> say any metric in the OSPO working group is just is just a metric. And we'll identify them based on how we tag them. You know what I mean? So like different, different metrics might have different collections of tags. Um, or we can... To Vinod's point, we can keep the focus areas. It's okay, you know, but it, again, it's just really for us. So, like, 
it would be possible. I'll just do an example here. Um, to your point, Tony, like um, we could, you know, like look at a focus area, which is, I don't know, like, um, you know, investment or something like that, you know, like how you, how we understand, but again, that's totally just for us. And then we would think about how we consider uh, OSPO investments. I think that may not be the greatest example, but I'm just trying to get us like, get it off the ground. So um, I don't know if I, if that makes sense. Yeah, all that makes sense. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Um, and Mako, hi, we're, this is now a new working group. <laughs> so just just so you know, so the, the value, we're not really changing just in terms of the metrics. Um, we were partnering up with the to-do group. Basically, there's a lot of organizations, as you know, whether they're for-profit, government, uh, academic, that uh, are starting to develop open source program offices for a variety of different reasons. And um, we're partnering with the to-do group to kind of rework the value working group to kind of serve as the home for how open source program offices uh, think about metrics that are relevant to them. So, and value seem to be the best fit for this. So we're kind of reworking the value working group uh, towards OSPOs. So there you go. All right. Um, all right, so did you, you merge that? Yep. The PR is merged. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can anyone change the name on the Slack too? I probably can. Elizabeth, can you do that? You probably can. I think anybody can. Or... <laughs> Hopefully not anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that, we have an old PR on the uh, on mm -hmm. this, which you sent when we were uh, removing the society, uh, social value. So I don't think this needs to be merged. Uh, it'll create a conflict. So maybe I'll decline that or. But then I don't get credit. I know, but for the future, you will get the credit. <laughs> I don't care. So what was this one? <laughs> uh, this one, uh, when we moved the societal value to DI. And, oh, and I see. It didn't got merged. So. I see. So this is just updating the readme, which is now been superseded by Anna's contribution. Yes. Yeah. So I'll 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 not uh, I'll not close it today, but uh, I want to keep it for a while so that uh, when we rework on the focus area, and then I'll keep the contribution you have already made. You can and... Close it. I don't care. You can just close it as a not merged. Okay. <laughs> Go back to it that way. Okay. Okay. All right. So now the then I think then the next step will be defining the focus areas that we want to keep, uh, as you were saying, like academic OSPO or non-profit OSPO. Should we bifurcate it from that aspect, like to keep our focus from that area, or should we keep our focus from some other? perspective like yeah what i what i actually think we should do first before we think about the focus areas is like what is the mission of this work group okay so now that we have potential members from the to do group and even potentially um ospo plus plus that work as well which is ospos within universities and government agencies and like still keeping, um, you know, without losing what we have done. Yep. So I, I'm kind of curious as to like Sean mm -hmm. or Elizabeth, you know, what do you, from a mission perspective, what do you think this working group should be doing? I think the I think the working group should be doing some of the kinds of things that I'm doing with companies like uh, Turgia, Turgia, Grimoire Lab, um, VMware, Red Hat, 
um, eBay, you know, where they have, where they're trying to figure out what to do with an OSPO indeed, and how to, how to count things inside of an OSPO and how to bring metrics to the front and make them useful in the, in the form of metric models. So, I mean, I think it's about taking an OSPO perspective first more than anything. What does that mean? It means that there are, I think what we've defined with metrics models are particular areas that OSPOs may be interested in, whether they involve assessing the welcomingness of a community or assessing the velocity of a community. Those are both questions that are specific health questions that OSPOs have asked repeatedly. Um, newcomer, um, stickiness, uh, understanding speed of responsiveness. I mean, these are, there's a, there's a, there's a repertoire of maybe five or six core questions that OSPOs come with wanting solutions to different flavors of those questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is maybe about refining the flavors that are offered in a kind of a more stock or standard chaos tool distribution so that people can get the insights that they want more so quickly. Helping refine the flavors like like what welcomingness can mean in Yeah. Well it, it's it's okay, we're building these metrics models. We've got dashboards and different tools. Ultimately, there are ones that resonate over and over again as important and ones that are more here and there emerge within a particular context as important. And identifying those, you know, which ones are the really the high value items that are consistently viewed that way, and which ones are the niche items that come up in specific circumstances. You know, an example would be like in a mergers and acquisitions scenario, there's a lot of focus on licensing and levels of contribution within a firm. But those questions are not as prevalent outside the context of a mergers and acquisitions scenario. Um, do you think that we should be from, from your work, like in OSPOs that we should be thinking about like right away, like thinking about metrics models just right away or. I like, think, I th yeah, I mean, I think, I think there are, I think we know there are metrics models or collections of metrics that haven't been defined as models that are consistently interesting. Okay, I, I agree suppose. with that. Even when I was participating about a month ago, actively, like a key set of the metrics that I found on one of the PRs was a suitability for use metric, right? It's a like if someone in one of our development teams comes to me in the OSPO and says, hey, can we take on and work on this project? I have to prove to senior leadership that it's worthwhile for us, right? And so a suitable for use kind of metric is also one that we were taking a look at about a month ago. Yeah, and I think that's a I think it's a metric model. I agree with that, Sean. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I, I I'm uh, having thought about this for a couple of days now. I'm thinking if we're I like your your points, Sean, about taking the OSPO perspective first. Like I really like that. And well, um, it doesn't push out all of the other things that we've ever thought about. It just it's a way of being, it's a way of saying we're going to take this perspective first. Yeah, no, I like that because I think if we have members from, again, the to-do group or OSPO++, there's going to be um, kind of a desire to have uh, like artifacts that can go back to the OSPO <laughs> and right. That's, help, yeah. in, help frame an argument, <laughs> help sh show to developer, whatever it might be, but something that's active and a lot of times if we are spending our time like just developing single metrics, I'm guessing that many of the members from the to-do group will be like, oh my gosh, this is quite low level, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And this isn't quite what I was looking for. So I'm wondering if we take kind of a 
model approach first, kind of what we do in the metrics model working group. Um, you know what I mean? Where we, we just kind of say, here's yeah. the model. And sometimes we have the metrics that have been deployed by chaos, and sometimes we don't. Right. So um, kind of for, for Tony and Mako, and we do have a metrics model working group, and we'll have a metrics model that is, say, called welcomingness. And, you know, what we're sort of trying to understand community welcomingness. And in that working group, we'll kind of just brainstorm, like, what would be the metrics that we would care to look at to understand welcomingness? And it's quite possible that five of the seven metrics that we are interested in exist in the chaos project and two just don't exist. We have to right. probably publish those, but it's a model first kind of orientation. I think that might be kind of a good idea here. So I like that. Well, and, and that's, I mean, the model first orientation is really taking a, it's really putting this common reason that people are coming to chaos, which is to see something, to get some metrics not necessarily to define them. So I think we do have a bigger consumer focus now. And I think this group reflects that and making the things that we've accomplished easily viewable in the context of projects someone cares about. And I think that's that's our bread and butter going forward. And the metrics models help to serve that. Agreed. Okay. I have a question. I have... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I jumped in there. Um, my quick question is how do we differentiate between OSPOs in industry and OSPOs in like academics or science or any other industry, or do we care? That's my question. Uh, I think there will, I think we care. I think there'll be particular things that OSPOs in academia are interested in that are different than uh, corporate OSPOs. And, that, and that's okay. I, I think how much we develop each part of the space depends on engagement from each part of the space. Yep. So yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, Fair ahead. enough. Go ahead, Renan. My question was uh, on the previous discussion on the model first aspect is then if we are taking that approach as a model first, then how we distinguish our work as an OSPO uh, working group from the uh, model working group? Both are working in a similar direction, uh, but we are taking an OSPO perspective. Uh, yeah, I think the, I mean, part of it is just going to be time zones. A lot of the people who participate in the metric model working group are in Asia Pacific. And yep. so that's, uh, it's pretty late in the day for us okay. so that we can accommodate folks in Asia Pacific. Um, so, I think the discussion can still carry on there. So basically we do have, this is the metrics model working group. And these are the models that we've been developing there. So the purples are pretty much getting good to go. And then Vinod's asking if, if this group is developing metrics models and we're developing metrics models like What's the differentiation between the two? Well, and to your point earlier, Matt, everything just goes on the website at, at, on the same level without really. Yeah. Yeah. So, so on the website, at least the front facing will be a little less confusing. Yeah. Um, it'll probably just be internally where we try to figure out where stuff is. So probably, probably so. Yeah, maybe there should be some alignment with these two working groups so that uh, we don't reinvent this thing that we have already done at one uh, group. Sure. Group. I mean, quite possibly we could yeah. just continue to have this be like a collection of OSPO, like atomic yeah. metrics, like the kind yeah. of the lowest level things that need to be developed. And yeah. when we develop a new metric model, we simply place it here. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing that says, yeah, <laughs> if we develop yeah. it here, it must go yeah. on this. No, even even in the past, we have moved a metric to a model and merged it to the model working group. In the yeah, so that, maybe that's itself. the approach that, yeah. you know. Um, so I have a comment here. So um, how do we differentiate between the OSPO and um, well, it's not really differentiating between them. 
it's yeah. mostly just like this this tab yeah. sheet. Yep. Maybe like, aligning the both the work together. Yeah. And and in fact, I mean, if we're working in this sheet, I mean, it's or I'm sorry, if we're working here, say one evening with our friends in Asia Pacific. Like these are yep. things we can bring back to this call as yep. well. Yeah, yeah, it's not too too difficult. Um, I was gonna also make a point just to your question, Elizabeth, and I think Sean, I think this is what you were saying, and I agree that it's. I think we develop the metrics and metrics models and tooling around the the people who are present <laughs> in this in this call. Um, I don't know if that's what you were getting at, Sean, but like the you're muted, but. So how you muted? I can't unmute you. Can you Sorry, I think yeah, I think I have some. I think I have two zooms up right now. Is what's going on? <laughs> um, yeah, I I was. I think what I'm saying is the OSPO lens. Even this is the the lens that we take. So it's what are OSPOs asking for and metrics models are part of it but i think maybe part of what we do is evolve metrics models and help present them to ospos in a way that are, is easily consumed and use the ospo feedback from this meeting to refine things that are presented through technology or software <clears throat> so that that uh, it's more clearly and directly relevant you know, cool. it's, it's kind of like by doing the engagement with OSPOs, we learn a lot about what OSPOs need and can reflect that back in the metrics and metrics models built by the rest of the community. So um, then I have another, okay, so then I have another question kind of on that. Sean, do you think it's going to be possible to deploy some of these metrics models in the public facing instance of Augur that you have or maybe you could talk a little bit about your conversation with Daniel like kind of what yeah I mean I, this. so I mean Daniel and I talked about the SAS um, possibilities uh, emerging through the metrics model working group and Asia Pacific working group um, and you know he's aware of it he's excited about it uh, and we discussed the software as a service model for Augur which is coming down the pike here in the next week or two and I, I, my ambition would be to deploy both in a, in a public facing way that's okay. on European hardware for GPR reasons primarily. Okay. And that's, that's, I think a direction that, I think that's happening. Okay. Like, like, I don't think there's any question that's happening. So it's not out of bounds to think that there could be a SAS version of Augur deployed within this month one. yeah <clears throat> to which we could because i'm thinking like um kind of and then it's making those models you know making the model implementations visible so how so like let's say that with tony on the call here so let, like let's say that there are particular repositories that or communities that tony's interested in and we had you and i had talked about this too sean like sas can help like kind of precede some of the organizations that don't have the time and the mm -hmm. engineering effort or space to kind of deploy chaos software on their own. Yeah, yeah. And that SAS models might help in this regard. So mm -hmm. can you, is it going to be possible for you to, in this deployment, kind of give somebody like Tony like a space where he can ask questions that are you and the answers are only observable to him? Or is that not the right way of putting it? There's so the way that uh, we envision going forward is we do have probably 20,000 repos that are commonly or have been requested at various times by different entities that seem to have some popularity. Uh -huh. So we'll seed the the shared instance with those. And then when you log into it, you create, you'll create an account and you'll be able to indicate which orgs and repositories you're interested in seeing in your view of it. And you would then see 
data about your repositories that you care about in that view. The other data would still be there. And if somebody wanted to build additional views, I think that's what could be undertaken through a combination of this group's initiative and what's already been developed in the metric model working okay. group. Okay. So I think I think in the metric model working group we have more I think we have a consistent group of stakeholders that perhaps don't represent the entire world of OSPO stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And through this group we can refine those models to be not only useful to the other stakeholders, but also to the people who are part of this group and to other chaos consumers that have OSPOs okay. that maybe take on a different form. <clears throat> because yeah, we've learned that these OSPOs are heterogeneous. They have many different concerns. So am I understanding this correctly, Sean, that like this SAS version of Augur would be pre-populated with public repos? Like a Oh yeah, Linus's everything would be public. And I'd be able to pull metrics for Linus's tree? Yep. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, it would only be public uh, for obvious Yeah, that's, obvious that's reasons. the part where we have to cross that line, right? Um, mm -hmm. For me and our organization. So I wanna track metrics and I am tracking metrics for public repos, but I also have to track metrics against our internal repos, our forks of those repos to kind of cattle prod some of our developers to upstream and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of need both sides of Augur. And, the, and so that merely requires that um, you're using tokens that have access to those private repositories. And okay. so that would probably still require a separate instance of Augur, but that's increasingly easy to do. Right, okay. Because you obviously don't want the private repo data available to others. So right. that, that would be a reason that you would still need a your own instance of Augur if you're incorporating private repos. And I think it's the same situation with Grimoire Lab. Um, Effectively, if if it's not public, then you need special keys, and you probably don't want that the data that you gather with those special keys in the public domain. Right. Okay. So, in in this scenario, Sean, is it is it an Augur instance that you stand up, or is it an Augur instance that Tony stands up with the intention? We've done it both ways. I okay. I think it depends on what resources Tony has internally to stand something up. Okay. Okay. But Augur is increasingly easy to stand up, so. Okay. And I could certainly help him do that without. Well, yeah, and that's actually time. something that I'm, I'm going through right now is that we don't, I don't need to get into the internals of our company, but um, I'm trying to run Augur on some local hardware and um, just the walkthroughs aren't always completely transparent to me. Like the instructions are a little contradictory depending on where you start and some of the how to, but yeah. Um, yeah, just how to spin up an auger instance as quickly and easily as possible would be beneficial. Um, especially if there was like some way to take whatever's being done as in the SAS instance, and like clone all of that infrastructure as is onto like a local server and just kind of spin up our lo own local SaaS instance of it. Yeah. I mean, 20,000 repositories compared to what you're probably interested in is right. probably going to have a hardware requirement more than you need. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so it's kind of your call on what parts of the hosted instance come in. Um, right. Exactly. It's just, it's a matter of, spinning it up and standing it up quickly. Yeah, I mean, that's that can be done. I just have to we'd have to just talk as an aside about how to do that. Absolutely. Okay, what you, yeah, what you need, what off. you need. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can email you a side man. Are you on Thanks. the Slack channel, Tony? I my computer blew up and I'm in the process of reinstalling <laughs> everything. So I haven't reinstalled um, Slack, but I am on the Slack channel once I have Slack. Installed. Okay, that might be a good way to do it, too. Okay. Um, so, I mean, is it like Sean, um, like, is it a goal of this, of this USPO working group to provide this SaaS service? Like, I think that's a, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think, yes. I, I mean, I, I would, I, I think, I think the SaaS service is 
part of the mission that we described if we're going to be OSPO facing okay. OSPO forward. Be because okay. the OSPOs that are coming to Chaos want to see their data. They want to see things about repositories they care about. Yep. Okay. So then another question. This is really great. Thank you for um, so sh this is again for you, Sean. So like with respect to the SAS instance, you know, we have the metrics models that are here and others that we can kind of form in this OSPO working group coming coming from mm -hmm. here. Does the Augur SAS instance provide is the intention to provide only the metrics models or um because I know that like our like the work that's being done in Asia Pacific, like the really the the main intention is to provide the metrics models. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what the, the SaaS service is about. So is that the same with Augur? I think I think I would I would answer that yes. And what those metrics models are, I think should I would like to see them molded to fully meet the requirements that uh, particular OSPOs have yep. and that that would help us to refine and make more generalizable the metric models that we have. So I believe there's a probably a perspective gap in the models we've built so far that can be filled by, you know, wider input and real time. Okay. I'm an OSPO. This is what I need. Um, so I think the, iter the iteration power is significant. Okay. From this group. Okay. Like if Are it's there... not, if a panel's not useful to an OSPO at all, then it's not probably a primary motivation for this group. Right. Okay. Um, do you, okay. I'm, I'm trying to also like visualize what this SAS service from Augur would look like. Do you have any visual of it at the moment or not yet? Um, not, um, I have a lot of different visuals, but I don't have a coherent whole okay. right now. So there are, are a number of front end pieces that people have put together. Okay. So still in process. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't have them ready to share right now. Do you know, okay. Not really part of the mission, but do you know what you're, I mean, if you plan on releasing this in a month's time, mm -hmm. do you know what? when that would be potentially shareable i'm thinking about like it yeah on this group yeah i think i think it'll be i mean i think there are some things that are shareable now i think saying okay here's a metrics model here's the representation of that metrics model yeah um i have to put pieces together to do that okay yeah i'm trying to i'm not trying to put pressure on you i'm just trying to get my bearings on on where you're at okay so do you think in two weeks you could have a presentation at least yeah. to help people? Yeah. Um in two yeah, in two weeks, yes. Are you are you going to Sweden? Yeah, but I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> will will that get in the way of trying to do that work? I don't want to No, that actually the hosted instance of Augur is something that I is important to launch before that trip. So when are you going to Sweden? Um uh, a week from Sunday. Oh, okay. <laughs> no time like the present. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, cool. Um, so, uh, then should we write the mission statement for this working group or should we wait? Um, so I kind of see it as, as three things. So one, taking an OSPO perspective is important to demonstrate in that and that we're a model first orientation okay we're about kind of bringing together metrics in ways that are meaningful for ospos and then two is just i was trying to and then two is this that our intention is to deploy these metrics models via via SaaS solutions okay so that ospos can interact with them okay because I I've talked to Sean quite a bit because he's worked with OSPOs and like 
I mean, and, and even it was interesting because like even doing the talk yesterday and the ospology, like clearly different organizations are at different levels or different kind of stages of ospos. Mm -hmm. But there are clearly like the ospos at the large organizations that run quite differently than the ospo. There was like a question, you know, like how do I even start an ospo or something like that? You know what I mean? Like kind of these really early questions. So I think to Sean's point, or at least not in this call, but the, the SaaS possibilities would really help proceed investment in an organization, like to, to have dedicated personnel and infrastructure around a deployed solution. Um, I think that's extremely helpful for OSPOs that are potentially early in, in their OSPO journey. I think it can be important to, yeah, for that storytelling that needs to happen early. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> And along those lines, how heterogeneous OSPOs are, um, one of the experiences I had, I think I shared this with Sean and, and Elizabeth when I first started coming, I went to OSS in Austin over the summer, and a lot of people's perspectives was from like, I, I won't call it a combative standpoint, but like trying to bring an OSPO into an organization that hasn't had an OSPO before and maybe has some resistance to it. I, no one had any advice for me about an organization where they're super friendly to an OSBO and I have green fields in front of me. Like I said, how do I start this up? And like, everyone wants to support me. Where do I start? And no one had an idea of like how to do that because most of the perspectives were like, well, if your company is resistant on this particular thing, go attack that thing first, right? And that's how you bring an OSBO up and, and, and add value. But when it's total green fields, there wasn't, much like and I think that we're going to see more of this kind of organization because I as I talk to my colleagues in, in other startups right a lot of startups that are starting right now already understand the concept of an OSBO and they want to do it from day one so Tony does the does the to-do group I haven't been real active are they helping with that argument you know what I mean no kind like even I even like had a brief conversation with Anna at, at OSS and mm -hmm. she was like, yeah. oh, wow. Like, it was like, I was blowing her mind. Like, okay. All of those folks are very much like, they're very good at what they do of like bringing an OSBO into an existing organization. But when the organization does is like, tell us what to do. Like, that's actually literally what the CEO of our company said is like, I was hired to drive open source at the company. I was told I had whatever resources I needed to have, but then how to like build that out with with total like latitude like there wasn't a way to i i didn't couldn't find a good way to uh wrap my arms around that where do you even start when everything is possible is does do you think that conversation belongs here or? well for me the way i'm approaching it and what reason i'm bringing it up here is that I needed to start showing metrics to okay. folks of like, this is what we're going to do as an OSBO. Well, like where, how do where, which, what are the key metrics I should probably start with? Right. Yep. Okay. Um, it's kind of like mm. you heard Dawn's point yesterday too, when she was like kind of differentiating metrics is a little different than what you're talking about. Cause she was like, right. there are the metrics that we have for developers <laughs> that's mm -hmm. over there. There are the metrics that we have to tell the story to executives. That's a different group of metrics. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm wondering if as we go through this process, part of what this working group can do too is, um, for example, Tony, like if you're if you're having success in what you're doing, like if the metrics are helping right. get, get through this green field, like, how, like why? Like how did you, how was that helpful? Because others might really appreciate that. Even yeah, and that's what I'm, I'm literally still figuring that out day by day. Yeah myself um but yeah i just wanted to make sure i mentioned that because maybe if if you are in one of those organizations like just off the top of my head like a metric that might be useful is just like go do a scan of all of the organiz or the code projects that you might be interested in using and find out okay. going back to my suitability perspective earlier is like how do you tell your developers okay this is a new thing go focus on this part of that project right yep. that's something an osbo can do very quickly okay i like that so i'm wondering too if just kind of the nod like yeah. as a you know like as a fourth which is like oops you know, like tell the stories mm -hmm. 
of how metrics are used in was, like various feet. stages of hospitals or something like that. Yeah, that, that would be really helpful, right? Okay. If nothing else, that gives a new Osbo lead like myself um, a starting point. Yeah, and I, from from my guess on the people who were on yesterday's Ospology, you're not alone. Like, <laughs> if you mm -hmm. figure it out and you tell the story, that a lot of people would be like, "Thank you, that's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great." At least as an orienting mechanism. Yeah, and actually, just I've got to drop off here in a minute because I got to go start another meeting here for work. Yeah. But actually, yep. to that point that we just wrote, that's actually where my I actually was in the meeting a month or two ago when we came up with the concept of this help.md file. And that was to help lead people like me when we're evaluating a um, repos that our developers want to use. If the developers of a project can go ahead and self-identify where they need assistance. Like if they already know we're writing code and we, we don't have good documentation, like that's... Um, that that's a way that like if we could have a metric model that can scan for that kind of file and programmatically pull that out like this project is weak in documentation this project is weak in CICD this project is weak in wherever right help us I think those if I think if you yeah. have those kinds of questions yeah we can address them so um I think if you have a, if you want good documentation, we can go identify a range of documentation thoroughness. No, and that's fine. It's, but like for me, I've got a, one of the projects that one of our development teams works in. The code is fine, but we intend to productize it and release it to customers. But the documentation in that project sucks. So we're having all of our developers spend their time writing really good docs for that project right because the code is fine the project works great but before we commercialize it and, and and bring it out as a part of our greater product we want to make sure it's got good community docs and but we had to go look at it and troll it and figure out like where is this project we and that was a manual thing mm -hmm. so all right so i've got to drop yeah. but thank you guys very much for today okay. thank you Thanks, Tony. yeah just one last item we are, we are out of time uh, that was like should we continue the meetings at this time or should we i think there was a, a i mean if we want to engage i don't know I th there was some thought of trying to do it earlier but i don't know if that's still important yeah earlier or later i thought it was a little later Oh. So we could include West Coast a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Okay. It could be later. Or earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or it could stay yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Certainly, if we went to like 11 o'clock, that would include West Coast better. Yeah. I'm fine I, either way. So, yeah. Yeah. 11 is, if we just pushed it back even just an hour, it's that doesn't get in the way. It's nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock, so that's Ooh. probably easier. Yep. Okay. Elizabeth, I assume that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> you yep. need to get yeah. out of here and go get some coffee. <laughs> so easy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, I was just thinking about the. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, what about... people. The, the risk group is later, so I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah, we are fine. <laughs> so should we push the timings one hour later? Yeah, That's let's just go ahead and do that. Okay. Decision here. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe like Vinod, maybe you and I can yep. even just in a Google Doc or something like just kind of take a take yep. a, a pass at this. This is super helpful. Yep. And I think it'll be really good for Anna too, as we kind of define what this group is about, because I think she wants yep. to broadcast this on social. With yes. Two. If we could kind of articulate that, that would be really helpful. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll try to make a write a draft for it and then share it with you. Maybe then take a pause okay. on that. Yep. Works okay. for me.
Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.